<laughs> That's right, it's time to talk about the AK-50 again. We're trying to keep this to like actual like serious machine shops that would be willing to work on this stuff. We're back with another AK-50 part for Brandon Herrera. This time, it's the bolt carrier. We did things a little unconventionally. We actually started with raw stock in our wire EDM and cut every single feature we could that doesn't go through the part. To start, we threaded our first hole and we roughed this hole that goes all the way through our bolt carrier. Then we threaded our second hole and we cut the entire profile of our part, but we left the tab on this side. That's finer frog hair. Dang, look at that. Beautiful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, did you guys just see that? People don't normally do this, right? Because EDM's not the fastest process in the world. But Trevor was able to take this seven inch piece of stock, make four cuts, and we almost had a complete part before it ever even saw a mill. This totally blew my mind, and he did it while we were all asleep. If you guys like the content, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We wanna bring awareness to manufacturing for as many people as possible. We're trying to get to a million subscribers by the end of the year, and we could really use your help. Jussie's gonna probe off of this hole that goes all the way through our part, so we wanna make sure that it's exactly where it needs to be. For our second op, all we had to do was clamp our part in our vise and cut the tab side that was left behind from our first operation. Doing that established our slot here, as well as the width of our part here. Now there's an interference fit with this feature and our cam groove dovetail, so we needed to hold about two ten thousandths of an inch accuracy on this face, this face, and this face right here. The wire EDM easily accomplished that. We just got the bulk hair from Trevor, and even though he was able to get most of the profile cut on the wire, there were still some features that he couldn't reach. So as you can see, I've got it just held in the vise for this first operation. Now we've got a couple cutouts to do on both sides of the part, as well as a slot down the barrel. We've also got this open pocket here on the end, as well as some chamfers here and there that he couldn't reach on the wire. Now all of this stuff is not very complicated, but we do need to keep in mind that he cut this entire profile as well as this through hole on the EDM. So we need to make sure that our setup is perfect with that hole or else everything is gonna be shifted. So what I'm gonna do is touch this part off like I normally would with the probe, but the very first operation that I've programmed is a simple drilling operation that is directly in line with this hole. Yes! Now that is just so the machine positions the spindle directly in the center of that hole, and then I can stop the machine, I'll put an indicator in the spindle, and we'll sweep that hole to make sure that our work offset is set perfectly. This platform is about manufacturing, and it's about taking this industry to greatness. And when doing that, I use different brands. We've had Haas, we've had Makino, we've had DMG Mori, we've had Tormach. Through all of it, I always think about you guys. Because the decisions that I make revolve around you and what's best for you, I thought I would just come and actually ask you guys for some information. I'm looking for advice. Did I make the right decision? Should I stay with this machine? Should I move on? The awareness to the DN brand that we brought in our videos, did that in some way inspire you or your shop to actually purchase these machines? I would love to hear the testimony. I'd love to also hear the value of the machines that you've purchased over the last three years and your goals for the future. And just any advice that you'd have for us. Now to get this information to me, I want you to go through my vice president at this company, Dave Cox. His email is simply dave at titansofcnc.com. As always, thank you so much for the support. Back to the video, boom. Now let's check out these pockets on the sides. If you notice on the first side here, we could actually take a large bull nose end mill and just machine right down this wall and exit out at this radius. But if we look on the right side of the part, it looks very similar, but if you look on this bottom floor, we've got a radius that comes up vertically. So if we laid it down like this, now we have an angle that comes off this wall right here. So these features on this side of the part is gonna make this difficult to use a simple bullnose tool. So what I chose to do instead, since this is a prototype one-off part, 
is to simply take a ball nose, rotate my five axis on an angle, and basically surface mill that with a 3D equal scallop tool path. Now that's gonna give me a perfect surface. I really don't have to worry about it. It's gonna add a little bit more machine time, but for a one-off part, it really doesn't matter. So after everything's finished on the first side, we're gonna simply flip this part over for op two. Because as you can see, we've got some open pockets and things of that nature, chamfers and stuff that the wire EDM couldn't reach. There's also a counterbore on this through hole on the barrel, as well as some pin holes on the bottom of the part. Now I could have done this counterbore on the first operation, but as you can see, these pin holes actually go through this counterbore on the sides. So I actually wanna drill those first before I machine this counterbore. That keeps those pin holes from walking. Once this operation's complete, we'll have done everything that we need to do and we need to get it back over to Trevor so he can finish his last operation. Now that Jesse's done, we're gonna finish off our bolt carrier by cutting this hole with a slot through it. In order to do that, we clamped on these two flats on our bolt carrier right here, and we stood our part up like this in our vise. And then we just came in with our wire and we cut that hole in that slot right out of there, pulled the slug, and then finished it off. Ooh, sparkly! The only reason I'm able to get away with clamping our part down here and having all this part up here hanging out in space is because we're using a wire EDM. Now, one thing about the wire EDM is it actually doesn't put any cutting force on our part whatsoever. Now, those of you mill guys out there, you know you'd be crazy to set a part up like this in a mill and start cutting on it like that. But since we have no cutting force, we get to use something like this to our advantage when it comes to fixturing. Another small thing to worry about on this is we didn't want this part to actually spring open when we cut it on the wire. So what I did was I actually left a little bit of extra stock when I roughed this out in case that happened. Now luckily, this is very stable, so we didn't have any issues with that, and we checked it by running a gauge block right through this slot, all the way up and down, and we didn't have any taper or any springing whatsoever. I'm super happy with how our bolt carrier turned out. I had a great time working with Jussie to make incredible parts like this, and to be honest, at this point, I just can't wait to see this bad boy fire. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also leave a comment let me know what you guys think about how this part turned out. So here we have our finished bolt carrier. Little lightning cuts look fantastic right off the bat. Got our claws here hanging out the edges. These are neat. Got our through hole there for our bolt stem. Everything looks super clean. So this piece fits nice and snug here. There you go. Like a glove. So when this is all the way in, this is actually flush. You almost can't even feel it to the touch where the seam is. That's really nice.